where do you guys think we go from here? You know, I mean, obviously, we're having these conversations, and, and, and I'm, I'm praying that in 31 other dressing rooms around the league, and if it's not on camera, like, two players are having this conversation at least, right, somewhere. But as a league, as, as the sport uh, overall, where do you guys think we go from here? I think, like, I mean, obviously, you, you want to see steps forward and you want to keep progressing. And I think, like, what we do here, and I think our organization has done a really good job at being forward thinking. But, like, maybe we're the ones that can kind of bring things forward and bring different ideas to the table and start using resources that we have, using the platforms that we have, like your personality coming out. And I think there's so much of that in hockey that we it's, it's untouched. I think guys bring a lot to the table, but they're a little bit uh, scared to open up about it. So I think if we can start to maybe change thinking in that way and, and bring some things to the table that may be a little bit different than our past, I think uh, it could help us a ton. Like before we, we sat down here, I said I was like super nervous, like I just, didn't grew up in that culture and like not sure what to say and especially these days like everything gets blown out of context so you want to make sure you say the right things but I think it's important to say something and step up and um, like Riley said we have the platform we have we have a voice out there I think it's not necessarily like a league thing I think it's like everybody individual mm -hmm. and yeah. I think, I mean, league thing, but also like talk about our organization. Like one thing that you talked about earlier in the conversation was you love talking, you love watching it. So you look at the community of Seattle, all of a sudden you have the Kraken and you got players like us. Maybe they, uh, you know, young kids watch, um, you know, on TV or maybe they've been to a game, but you said that your mom got you like a floor hockey set yeah. type of thing. And that's kind of how on top of having a you know, players that you idolized, uh, that's how you kind of, you know, fell in love with the game, playing it yourself. So I think, you know, COVID has put a little bit of a, you know, a damper on maybe visiting in the communities and kind of doing school visits. And um, I know on other teams in the past, that's what we have done going in, playing floor hockey with kids. And um, just, you know, some people look at us, like we talk about this platform and how they look up to us, but just, you know, going in there and spending a day with, with, with people. And that's kind of how I fell in love with the game too. This one might be a, an interesting question. It's more just along the lines of, uh, so if there's somebody out there that, you know, maybe they're thinking that hockey's not for them, what would you say is the best things about hockey? Like, what do you love about hockey and why it should be for everybody? Why everybody should play? What is, what about hockey draws you in the most? For me, just hockey, I don't know what it was. It's just like, it sounds a little cliche, but when I stepped on the ice, it was like this anti-drug for me. Like no matter what was going on in the world or my personal life, when I stepped on the ice, like none of that mattered to me. Um, and when I played other sports, I, I just like didn't really get that feeling. It's something about like, you talk about the little artistic things of hockey, the blades hitting the ice, like the pucks hitting the posts and the glass, and, and, and you combine that with, you know, a camaraderie that I feel like I never had. And, uh, I, I had close teammates, but not in other sports that I played as tight knit as I had. And for me, I always looked at, you know, when I was playing football, I love playing football, but they call in a play and you go run the play. There was no audibles at, at that age that so you just ran the exact play. So <laughs> running play, you go here or you just go block and then you go line up again. You get in the huddle, they call another play, you run the play. And for hockey, it was just the creativity. Yes, there's the set plays. There's the systems that you run, but you're just out there reacting. You're out there playing. You're just doing it. There's not a whole lot that you can say, you know, from playing, it's it's hard because we played and we just do things. You can hard to explain. Even on TV sometimes I'm trying to explain, you know, what happens. It's like, I don't know, they're just reacting. Like you're just doing it. But, you know, for me it was that creativity side of the game where in every other sport that I was playing, it was like, you know, run a play or they pitch and there's just a lot of downtime for me. You know, just getting out on the ice and being able to just skate fast and move within the game and it's so free flowing. So that's for me, you know, the one thing that just drew me in so much and why I have such a passion for the game and why I want to share it with everybody. No matter, you know, your race, your religion, whatever your background is, to me, hockey is the greatest game, especially playing, watching it live, you name it. That's for me why I love hockey and I want to continue to grow the game and share it with everybody. 
That's a good answer. So, uh, that's what I said, it's yeah. going to be an interesting question, yeah. a hard one to explain, but I just think it's important because the game is so, like, it is, to me, I'm biased, I already know that, but <laughs> I love the game so much, I want to play it. Yes, you know, there's, it has room to grow. There's things that can change within the game, but those things shouldn't, I don't want those little things to stop somebody from trying the game of hockey. I want, I you know, to show the, Show the positive side of hockey. There's a lot we can still work on, but at the same point, like this is a beautiful game, and you know, just getting everybody to at least try the game to, you know, take that opportunity, take that chance, and you might just love it. In my hometown, we did like a, an exchange where, you know, French Canadians came to, uh, you know, they were, I forget what city it was in Quebec. So Quebec City, they they don't speak much English. Um, they came and stayed uh, with my family, and then I did the same thing. And even though we didn't speak the same language, like, just. There's something about hockey where in my basement growing up, um, it was an unfinished basement and we put a hockey rink down there basically or a hockey net um, and I just like shot pucks all the time, broke some windows and I just remember these French Canadian kids coming as well and I couldn't communicate with them but I could communicate through hockey. Um, and that was something that I remember spending a long time, um, you know, when I went there and they came uh, to our house, like it was almost like, even though we couldn't communicate, we were communicating um, through the game of hockey. And we talk about perspective in this conversation. It's a global sport where you can, I'm always looking at perspective to, you know, there's three, four or five people from different backgrounds here and kind of learning. And, and I think that's the coolest thing about it. I mean, one of the things that I remember the, the most too is like when I was playing, I was when I was with the uh, Tampa's organization. They ran a a program where after school the staff would go from like the front office would go up and they would do school. They would help teach the kids school, but then after you know study class or study time, they would go to the ice rink and they'd be the learn to skate program. And you know I tried to fill in as much as possible. My wife would be one of the tutors there as well. You know from the school, and if they didn't get their school work done, they didn't get to go to the the ice time, which the ice time was the the goal, the reward. And you know the first couple times on the ice that I was out there too. You know it's it's hard to learn at eight years old to pick up skating. It is a hard thing. So I feel like it was like oh I don't want to do this anymore. They never played hockey. Tampa, larger Hispanic community. Didn't really want anything to do with it at first, but you know, by the, the second time and the third time and the final one for their final like graduation present, they got to play the in arena game uh, in between the periods. And I didn't play that game, so I was able to go down to the boards and see them and just to see every kid's face that, you know, maybe day one they had that attitude of, you know, I don't watch hockey, I've never seen hockey, this game's not for me. But, you know, a couple months down the line they're playing in front of 20,000 people and the smiles and the fist bumps and, you know, just to see their pure joy of a game that just not that long ago had no interest in, had never seen a game, never played the game. You know, that for me is what, it, what it's all about and sharing the game that we all love with, you know, community that, you know, that said, they've never watched the game and now you've created fans, you've created friendships. So I think, you know, that's an important part of this game that we can all give back and share to to everyone. That's just getting goosebumps. Like that, that, that elicits an emotional response for me because I, that's exactly what it was. Like I, I, it was like you said, all of you, it was the beauty, the creativity of, of the game, the team aspect of the game. And I remember just watching it and I was just so enamored and I was so into and in love with the idea of being that fast and being that strong. I was a big goalie guy. So like I loved the pads and all the gear like that. It was such a unique sport, and and again, like you said, being able to be a fan of and involved in a sport that historically isn't for you, like that, that gives me a very emotional response because I'm I'm picturing myself there and being one of those kids, and and even though I, I never got to play hockey as a kid growing up, but a lot of my friends did, and I saw the fun that they had with the game, and I saw the, the joy that they had. I have a couple of cousins who live in Cleveland, and they're both black, um, and they played youth hockey as, as kids. So I would go to their tournaments whenever they would play in Detroit, 
And man, it was like they, they had the track suits on and they were playing, uh, they let me play knee hockey in the hallway with them one night. Like that was, that was the coolest thing ever. I'm eight years old playing knee hockey. I don't know what the heck knee hockey is, but they gave me a stick and I'm, I'm shooting the tennis ball at the wall and getting chased by hotel security, right? Like that's, <laughs> but that's the fun part. That's yeah. the fun part of it. So that, that response that you get when you think about um, growing up and, and playing the game and, and being involved in the game, that's what I want my kids to have. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be a father in May, and the first thing that I'm going to do when my kid's old enough is, is I'm going to put a hockey stick in his hand. I'm going to put him on skates. It's going to be daddy daycare at practice. Like, I want him to be at the rink. I want him to be around, and, and I want to show him, that, like, hey, man, yeah, you're, you're going to be a black man in America, but you are going to be able to, you, you are allowed, and you are welcome within the game of hockey, within the sport of hockey, um, so that's that's what I'm looking forward to. But it, it's I, I love that story. Like I got I got chills hearing it. I made it up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So I know we're 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 uh, we we had a great conversation. I I got one more question just for me. I, I just want each of you to to tell tell us in in as many or in as few words as possible. Just give me one thing that ultimately five years, ten years from now you want to be able to look back on and say that you helped accomplish within the game of hockey when it comes to inclusion when it comes to diversity when it comes to getting people involved what's the one thing that you want to be able to say like man i was a part of this i i helped do that or i'm really happy that blank happened what would what would that be for each of you I think for me personally, I, I think one of the things that I loved doing when I played in Nashville um, and definitely some of the minor league teams that I've been on was just going into communities. I'm very much a realist and not everybody has the opportunity that I had kind of growing up. And if it wasn't for myself having an older brother who loved the game, I you talk about going to your cousin's um, tournaments. like. I basically followed my brother around and he loved the game because of my dad. Um, and if some people might not have parents that, you know, grew up playing hockey or, or whatever it may be, and if you can go into schools and communities, it's contagious, this game. I feel like it's it's addicting where once you get a little taste of it, you always want a little bit more. And um, I think that's something that I experienced growing up and, and not everybody gets that opportunity. And for us, I, I think it's important to go into communities in order to show how much passion we have for the game. And I think other people um, will be able to, to, you know, cling on to that. I think that's the way we can help and that's the way we can grow. Going, talking to the community, talking to, going into classrooms and maybe there's gonna be a couple kids who like watch TV that night and say like, hey, this guy like talked to me or like we played floor hockey with him. And like, no, not a lot of people have the opportunity to buy equipment and um, get their kids into the sport and that's where we maybe can help out too and like um, get kids on the ice and try it out and maybe um, they're not as afraid of uh, of maybe falling down on the ice and hurting themselves if they have pads on yeah. and now it's that's that I think Five ten years from now, if you if you look back and you say like, hey, we started this conversation, we went into the community, we talked about this. It's it's literally for everyone, like we've been saying, and you get ten kids, twenty kids into the sport, and it doesn't matter if their religious background, uh, if they're African American, if they're I don't know from Russia, yeah. then so be it. No, I, I think these two nailed on the head for sure. I think showing your face in the public and um, being like leading by example, I don't think it really takes much. It's just, I think, I think especially at that age for young kids, like they latch on to things pretty quickly. And if you can do something that they can admire and you can show them a couple of tricks with a hockey stick, if you can um, be nice and just be kind, I think that that can go a long way because playing, we're all, all of us players, have been really lucky and have obviously maybe some God-given talent. We've been really lucky we've made something of it, but I think there's a whole another bulk of people that should know that this game is open for them, whether it's in front office, whether it's in massage treatment, whether it's in refereeing, whatever it is. And I think that that uh, population is maybe a bit untapped for those reasons. Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, five, 10 years, you know, pushing down the line, I don't know that the, the changes, it's not something that just happens immediately, right? There, it, it takes time, but 
you know, being able to have conversations like this and just experience, you know, just to, you see your experience, see my experience, to have this conversation. I'm hopeful, you know, with what Seattle's doing, uh, the league is making steps as well that, you know, five to seven to ten years down the line, the game is going to look different. And, you know, I thank you guys again for, for coming down and doing this. Thanks for having us. Yeah.